to his disciples when the Bible said that he went up into a mountain and when he was set, he opened his mouth and he taught them. And he said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, yeah, yeah, yeah. for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yes, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Yes. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Yes, For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You are the soul of the earth. Come on, really. But if the soul has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and trotten in the feet of men. Yes, yes. Ye are the light of the world. Yes, sir. A city that sets on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine, that men may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yeah. Isn't the word of God awesome? Yes, sir. It just has a way of moving. You don't have to add anything to it or take anything from it. Amen. God is truly, truly good. Giving honor to God, to all the members of Gethsemane, to all the officials of the church, to all of our guests, and to all of our visitors, and to all that are watching us on live stream this morning. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know the question, is there a word from the Lord? And there is a word from the Lord. If you've got your Bibles with you, if you would go to Exodus, the 20th chapter, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 6. And for those that are able, if you will stand for the reading of God's word. And the word of God reads... And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy hmm, unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. If you bear with me, I, I want to just take a closer look at that A part of verse 2. And it just simply says, I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God. And, and I just want to tell somebody that God wants to supply all your needs. Yes, yes. He says, I am the Lord thy God. Right where we're standing. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We thank you that you woke us up and started us on our way. Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the anointing that's in this house and upon me, these lips of clay. Lord, bless me that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness. Asking that you think through my mind, speak through my lips, and this word will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. And we give you all the praise, call it done, fully expecting signs, wonders, and miracles confirming the word in Jesus' name. Amen. I am 
the Lord thy God. Uh, somebody here today, you, you need to know that you have a God that can do whatever you need him to do. You, you got a God that you can call on in, at any time, day or night, to do whatever you need him to do. I, I was telling my daughter uh, a few years ago, uh, uh, she's up in age nine, uh, uh, working and moving around and doing things, but when she was in school, she tried to do everything on her own. And so one day I, I told her, I said, baby, all you had to do was just call me and tell me what you need. I said, you got to do it. And well, she did exactly what I told her to do every time she needed something. She called me. But, but here's what you got to understand. You have a God yes, that you can call on for whatever, wherever you're at, whatever you, whatever, you can just go out right through. Man. Wherever you are, yeah. you can call on God. Yeah. Over the last couple of years, we've been talking about the kingdom of God. And uh, I said that the kingdom of God is within you. Yeah. And here's what we've got to understand. God's kingdom it is not of this world, yeah. but it works in the earth because it is inside of us. Yeah. You, you know, one of the things that's not in my notes, but... I felt good during the revival because I heard several pastors when they were preaching said, the kingdom of God is within us. Yes. The spirit of God is in you. Yes. Yes. That's how we operate. But see, we have to work the principles of God's kingdom yes. in order to receive its benefits. But we find the principles of the kingdom of God in the Bible. And we need to know the truth of God's word and understand how his kingdom works. Yes. God has designed his kingdom to function in a certain way. And in order to separate ourselves from the world system and operate in God's system, we need to seek and live by the truth of the word. Yes. Jesus said, if ye continue in my word, and ye are my disciples indeed, Without the truth, we can't break free from the world system. See, God is telling us, I'm your source. I, no, not, 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 not your mama, not your, I'm your source. He, he said, everything you go going through, God is not moved. Now, I didn't know the answer or the response at that time, but since then I read Matthew the sixth chapter, the eighth verse, for it says, "Your father knoweth that ye have need of everything before ye ask." God knows what we need, but we must still. Ask. Oh Lord, somebody with me. It's working. It's working. We still have to ask. We must do something. Uh, to have our needs met. In James, the fourth chapter, it says, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. See, in, 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 in parts of India and Africa, Haiti, all over the world, people are starving to death. Well, why isn't God moving? It is because he's not moved by needs. See, the thing that moves God is faith. Yeah, Lord yeah, Jesus. Yeah. He, he designed his kingdom to work by faith, but not just faith, but faith in him. Yeah. 
I, I was listening just this morning. I said, look at you, God. I was listening to a preacher. He, he said this. He said, faith is like money in the world. See, the more you have of it, the more you can do with it. And, and the more faith you have, the more you can do in God's kingdom. You, you got to have faith. Now, 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 do you remember my first point? That, that God is not moved by your need? Yeah. For those that remember, there's, there's a story in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, about the prophet Elijah. That, that he went before King Ahab and, and Jezebel, and he said, it will not rain for three and a half years until I say yes. it's going to rain. And, and the Bible said that Jezebel said, kill him. But God told him to go down to the brook chariot, and he said, I'll send the rain. And he said, uh, the raven will bring you bread in the morning and uh, uh, bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And the Bible said that he went and he did eat and he drank. But the brook dried up. And the Bible said that God commanded him. He said, I've commanded a widow woman in Zarephath to feed you or to sustain you is what the word he used. And the Bible said that when Elijah found the woman, her and her son were in the middle of a famine, and they were ready to eat their last meal yes. and die. Huh. See, when, and think about the prophet seeing them. He, he didn't go in there and say, well, girl, you know you didn't survive this one. You're you going to survive a little bit more. He, he said, no. He, he didn't even say, he, he, he didn't say that. He, he didn't even say, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to bring some food. And he didn't say that. But see, the strangest thing he said he, he said, you have to sow something. He said, take the, 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 the meal and take the oil. He said, when you bake it, bring me a piece first. Now see, it took faith. For Chino, this is my last, my, my last meal and my last oil, and you want me to give it to, and I got a son, but, but see, when we do what God says to do, and we have faith that no matter what happens, God is going to work, work it out. See, if she hadn't sown uh, the need, uh, she would have died. Yeah. Her and her son. Uh, if she hadn't sown uh, some need, uh, some seed, expressing her faith in God, she and her son would have died. Yeah. But God is not moved by our need. He needs some seed, yeah, yeah. and that expresses our faith yeah. to Him. You know that. You know what seed is. It's in your pocket. Yeah. See that, that that thing that you don't want to give up, oh, that you don't want to let go. But when you give that seed to God, guess what? He'll He'll bless you. He has set His kingdom based on His wisdom, and we have the work within. We have to work within the principles of His kingdom. The text that I read this morning is found in Exodus, the 20th chapter, and I read verses 1 through 6. Uh, but to really understand this, we need to go back to that 19th chapter of Exodus. And in those first six verses, this is what it says. In, in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. And, and Moses went up into, unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thou shalt say to the house of Jacob, yes. and tell the children of Israel, that ye have seen what I did unto uh, the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye, uh, if, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my commandments, then he shall be a peculiar treasure yeah. unto me, both all people, above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be uh, unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. Yeah. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like what he said. He said, uh, a kingdom of priests. Kings and priests unto God. Kings uh -huh. as lords over themselves. 
equal, equals one to another, owning allegiance to God only. Priest, the priest entitled to draw near to God in prayer without an intermediary. Now, I don't need nobody to go pray for me, kill him for me. He said, and bring him uh, their offering uh, to pay him their vows to bring it directly to God and to hold communion with him in heart and soul. In 1 Peter, the second chapter, he reads like this, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. In Revelations 1 and 6, it says, And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Yeah. Galatians 6 and 16, And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy upon the Israel of God. Then now moving into the text as we look down at that seventh verse. He says, and Moses came and called for the elders of the people yeah. and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Somebody with me? All that the Lord has, I'm going to keep every commandment. All that the Lord has spoken, on, we will do. And, and Moses returned the words of the people to the Lord. Isn't that something? Yeah. He went up there and said, Lord, that they said they're going to do everything yeah. that, that, that you say to Lord. Yeah. Now they said that they were, they, they were going to do it. See, see, God wanted to hear that because he wants to supply our needs. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's my next point. He, he wants to supply our needs. See, he does not want any other thing or person or organization to be our source. He said, I am thy God. I, I am. Yeah. I am thy God. Yeah. And, and he wants to be our source, our supply. Yeah. And, and this is how we get into the text because he said, I am the Lord thy God, yeah. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yeah. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. My, my old pastor would just say, he said, if you listen to people, they make you think they save themselves. Yeah. I, I, I will come to Jesus is God's work. I was just telling somebody this morning, God orchestrated yes, yes. everything that you've been through to get you to this point now. Yes. If you went to somebody right now and said, how did you end up at this church? <laughs> well, uh, well, I, I knew somebody and he come and, and it's a long story. But see, what God has to do, he had to orchestrate. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and he brought you here. The way Jesus said, he said, no man comes to me except the Father which has sent me Draws, oh, somebody with me. Oh, Lord, that drawing with me. Amen. Then he goes on in that fourth verse. He said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous. Ooh, jealous God. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon children until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. He, I like what he said. I am a yeah. jealous God. And he called himself jealous God in the King James Version. And in the Living Bible, he says, I am very possessive. And in the New Living Translation, he says, I will not share my affection with any other God. He said, I'm a jealous God. And, and, and it sounds just like a, a relationship. But you know what? Most of us have read that, but we didn't go any deeper. We just said, oh, he a jealous God. No, you got to know jealousy. 
And, 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 and here's my example of jealousy. If my wife walked in the door and she said, sweetheart, I was at the store and this man bought me a pair of shoes. He bought you what? You take them shoes and you throw them in the trash right now. You throw them away right now. I, I tell you, I'm a, I know he a jealous. I I am a jealous husband. I don't want nobody doing nothing for my wife. If I can't do it, she don't need it. And not only that, I give her everything that she wants. I, I love her. I, she got the new car. I drive her on Humpty Dumpty. She get everything. Yeah, I am a jealous. You better throw them shoes in the trash can. No, you ain't coming out. I don't care what. No, I don't want no man by my You know, I got this. No, he wants you to say, God has supplied all my needs. I don't have to beg nobody for nothing. I don't have to go to nobody. God has given me everything that I have asked for. He, he's taken care of us. And he wants to be our only and our sole provider. He doesn't want anybody else taking care of his bride. The Bible says in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bone. And for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they shall become one flesh, nobody else. He wants to take good care of us. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not go. He making me to lie down in green path. He leadeth me beside. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. See, Jesus is our shepherd. He is our ultimate source for all of our physical and spiritual and emotional needs. That is the way he always meant it to be. God does not want us to depend upon some other man somebody say, I, I made him. I made you. No, no, you don't want that. Everything I got came from God. Yeah. I heard a preacher say, if you can find anything in my house that didn't come through faith or through God, you can have it. Everything I got came through God. The, the, the Bible said, uh, for those Bible scholars in here, uh, that when uh, Abraham nephew Lot the, the Bible said that he, he got in trouble that uh, an army attacked Sodom and Gomorrah and they took him and not only they took Lot, they took all the goods, they took everything the women, the children the, everything that they had and, and the Bible said that when Abraham fallen out about it, that he put an army of 300 men together and he went and he destroyed and defeated the enemy in Genesis, the 14th chapter, the Bible said when he brought back all the, all the goods and he brought back his brother, uh, uh, his brother's son, Lot, and his goods and the women and all the people, that the king of Sodom, yeah, yeah. he went out and met him. Yeah. And he said, uh, after he returned, he said, you, you, you take, he said, I'll take all the people over and I'll make them slaves that you brought back. Yeah. He said, you can take all the goods for yourself. But Abraham said, no. He said, I, I, I lifted my hands to God. He said, everything that I did, God brought me through. He said, it was God that took me there. And I defeated him. It was God that brought me back. He, he said, no. He said, I will not take a thread. He said, I will not even take a shoelace. He said, because... I don't want you to ever say that I made Abraham rich. No, he said God took me there and God blessed me and he will continue to bless me. See, you got to know when you got a relationship with God, no matter what you go through, you can go to God and you can talk to him. Because God has brought you through every situation, everything that you did. When folks was talking about you, it was God that patted you on the shoulder and told you it's going to be all right. Abraham had a relationship 
relationship with God. The Bible said in Genesis, the 15th chapter, that these things, that after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in, in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thou exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord, what will thou give me, seeing that I'm childless? And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given me no seed, and lo, one born in my house is not my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, and he says, But he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy, you don't have your own child, not, not somebody else's. And he brought him uh, forth abroad. He took him outside. He said, Look at the stars. He said, If you can count them, so shall thou see be. He said, I'll bless everything that you put your hands to. I'll bless your children. I'll give you so many uh, heirs and so many. You, you can't even count all the things that's going to happen. The Bible says, He said, For I am the Lord thy God. Yeah. And thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not bow down thyself, and thou shalt not serve them. You know about the three Hebrew boys. The Bible said that King Nebuchadnezzar built a golden idol. And he called all the captains and all the princes, all the people of the kingdom. And he said, when you hear the music, he said, bow down and worship my God. The Bible said that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he said when they heard the music, they stood up and looked at him and said everybody else bow down. And if you read it, it said, and there were those. Now, I don't know who those were, but those went and told the king, everybody don't serve your God. And the Bible said that when they brought Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego before the king, the Bible says, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar said, is it true? <laughs> is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do you not serve my God and worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready, I'm going to give you a second chance. At what time you hear the sounds of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and the ducimus, all kinds of music, he shall bow, bow down and worship the image when I have made. Well, but if thou worship not, ye shall be cast into that same hour into the midst of the burning furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? I got a sermon on that. Who is that God will deliver you out of my hands? The king was trying to make all the people bow down and worship him. But the Bible said that Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O King Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. we're not careful to answer thee in this matter, but if it be so, the God whom we serve is able to deliver us out of the fiery furnace, and he's able to deliver us out of your hands. See, when you believe in God enough to defile the world's pressure, God's system will work for you no matter what you're going through. They increased the box seven times higher. The Bible said he delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace. But the king couldn't sleep. So he got up out of his bed and he went and he looked in the furnace and he said, did not we throw three in bound? He said, and I see four walking loose and the fourth one looks like the son of God. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, God will bring you through every situation. Just like these three faithful boys, God wants to supply all your needs. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you got coming up next week. But what I'm here to tell you is that whatever you go through, God is going to be right there with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of time. He said, I have called thee by name, and thou art mine. When thou passest through the water, I will be with you. When you go through the river, it won't overtake you. When you walk through 
Savior. I am whatever you need me to be. I am El Shaddai, Almighty God. I am the Good Shepherd. I am Alpha and Omega. I am the Great Physician. I am the Bright and Morning Star. I am the Bread of Life. I am your Rock and your Redeemer. I am the Sure Foundation. I am the Stone. I am the Living Stone. I am the Chief Cornerstone.